Hi everyone, I'm Glenn Poirier, I'm a geologist at the Canadian Museum of Nature, and I'm here to tell you some really cool stuff about the moon. The one feature you can see all over the surface of the moon are the craters. Everything is covered in big craters, there are craters that are 2,000 kilometers across, there are small craters. So what these craters are telling us is that the surface of the moon is really, really, really old. Like the youngest rocks we see in the surface of the moon are about 3 billion years old, and the oldest are about 4.5 billion years old, right from the start of the solar system. So the moon is telling us a lot about how old the solar system is and how it formed. So how did the moon get there? Before the Apollo era, there were a couple of theories. One said the moon was captured, it was a passing asteroid, got captured by the Earth. Another one said the Earth was spinning so fast that the moon actually spun off the Earth. But since we've had samples from the moon and in the Apollo era, there's one theory that really seems to fit all the facts, and that's what we call the collision capture. So what happened about four and a half billion years ago, just at the very beginning of the formation of the solar system, the Earth was struck by a body, say the size of Mars right now. So that body hit the Earth really hard, really fast, and it was totally disintegrated, like nothing left, no big pieces left. Some of that stuff ended up on the Earth, but what was left in orbit around the Earth coalesced to form the Moon. When the Moon formed, one of the things we know is that it formed a lot closer to the Earth than it was now. Probably at some point, it was as close as 150,000 kilometers from the Earth, whereas, whereas now it's 385,000 kilometers away. Can you imagine the night sky? After that collision, there was a lot of really hot rock floating around in orbit around the Earth. As that coalesced, the young moon actually had an ocean of magma covering the entire surface of the moon to a couple of hundred kilometers deep. That cooled and we got this white rock that we see over most of the surface of the moon and it's called an ornorthosite. The other rock we see when we're looking at the moon in the clear night is the gray stuff, the stuff that makes the man in the moon, that material there. And that formed later after the uh, ornorthosite had cooled from asteroid impacts. You had big impacts hitting the surface of the moon and they were melting the rocks below and causing this material called basalt to come to the surface. And this basalt filled these craters from the impacts and so you get these beautiful nice flat surfaces. And if you look at the landing sites where the, where the Apollo astronauts landed, they landed in these craters because they knew they were going to come to the moon and find a nice flat surface that they could land on easily. So we know the way the moon formed in this giant collision. Lots of fire, very high temperature rocks involved, and we knew that the moon was going to be very dry. But when we look at the rocks the astronauts ba bring back, we didn't realize how dry the rocks really are compared to what we find on Earth. And if we ever want to go to the moon, this is going to be a problem. We need water, right? But surveys of the moon have shown that there are craters on the north and the south poles that never see any sunlight. So they're like permanent deep freezes. And they find that if, you, if they look at the signature of the rocks in the bottom of these craters, we actually find signatures for water. This is going to be a great help. This might be one of the places we want to look at if we're ever going to live on the moon, because we need water for drinking and we need water for rocket fuel. So in the 46 years since we've last been on the moon, we've studied the rocks in the Apollo mission. We've got a lot of really good information about that. We've learned a lot about how the moon formed and what is, go what is actually going on on the moon now. But there's still a lot we need to learn and more recent missions have done a lot like get telling us about the surface chemistry of the moon, showing us detailed features on the moon, counting craters and things like that. But we've got a lot left to learn. So the next time you look at the moon in the sky, don't just think of it as a nice bright light. Think of it as a natural laboratory for finding out about the solar system.